This is my ninth video in my AP Biology review series, and it is about meiosis. Let's get started with some vocabulary. Heredity is the transfer of traits from one generation to the next, basically inheritance. Variation is the genetic differences between individuals. Individuals differ genetically from parents, although some traits are inherited. Genetics is the study of heredity. Genes are segments of DNA that code for proteins. Our genome is inherited from our parents, half from each parent, and genome is a collection of all our genes. A gene's locus is the gene's specific location on a chromosome. Gametes are reproductive cells. They transmit genes from parents to offspring. Asexual reproduction is where there's a single parent, and the genomes of offspring are copies of that of the parent. And because of this, the offspring is called a clone of the parent. Any genetic variation is caused by mutations. An example of an organism that performs asexual reproduction is a hydra. A hydra is a small freshwater organism with some pretty neat characteristics and abilities. As you can see in the picture, the offspring will bud off from the parent and they seem virtually genetically identical. Sexual reproduction is the opposite. Two parents have an offspring that has a unique combination of genes inherited from the parents. The offspring varies genetically from both parents and siblings. Meiosis and fertilization lead to this genetic variation, and we will be talking about that throughout the video. Somatic cells are all body cells except the gametes. They have 46 chromosomes in humans. This is a karyotype, which is a display of condensed chromosomes. Chromosomes in metaphase are taken and stained. I like this picture because you can see the sister chromatids of each chromosome because keep in mind this was taken as the chromosomes were in metaphase, so after replication, which is why there are sister chromatids in each chromosome. A pair of chromosomes that have the same length, centromere position, and staining pattern are called homologous chromosomes. As you can see in this picture, they're grouped by homologous chromosomes, and the two in each group look um, pretty similar as far as length and the position of the centromere. Both homologous chromosomes carry genes controlling the same inheritable traits. Here is another karyotype. In this one, you can see the staining pattern a bit better. Autosomes are chromosome pairs 1 through 22. The other chromosomes are the sex chromosomes, XX for female and XY for male. As you can see in this karyotype, it is a female. In the previous one, it was a male. Diploid cells are cells with two sets of chromosomes, 2N. We talked about them earlier. Somatic cells are diploid. They have 46 chromosomes in humans. Haploid cells are cells with one set of chromosomes, N. Gametes are haploid, and in humans, that haploid number is 23 chromosomes. Each gamete has 22 autosomes and one sex chromosome. An egg cell will contain an X, and a sperm cell can have either an X or a Y. So, as you can see, this is where um, the 50% chance of having a female offspring or a male offspring comes from, because the X is automatically inherited from the egg cell, and the sperm could have an X or a Y. Fertilization marks the beginning of the human life cycle. Gametes will fuse together, a haploid sperm cell with a haploid ovum. It's important to note um, why the gametes must be haploid. 
Because if the gametes were diploid, then they would, their fusion would create an organism that has double the normal amount of chromosomes. So the gametes have to have half the diploid number in order to form a diploid organism. I hope that makes sense. And we'll show a picture that clears that up. The fertilized egg is called a zygote. And again, it's important that the zygote is diploid because it's made from the fusion of two haploid cells. Mitosis will occur to create all the diploid cells of the body. And the haploid cells will be made by meiosis in the gonads. So here's a picture that shows how it's all related. As you can see, the sperm and ovum are haploid. They fuse in fertilization to create a diploid zygote, which will then mature, and the cycle will continue. Now for an overview of meiosis. The parent cell is diploid, but the daughter cells are haploid. The parent cell has homologous pairs of chromosomes. One cell will divide into four. There are two stages of division after replication of the chromosomes, meiosis 1 and then meiosis 2. And again, we need these two stages of division in order to take a diploid cell and make it haploid. Now let's look at an overview of the stages. Interphase, homologous pairs of chromosomes are replicated. Then meiosis 1, homologous chromosomes are separated. And then meiosis 2, which reminds me a little bit of mitosis, Sister chromatids are separated. Now I'm going to show you a diagram that shows the overview of meiosis. It doesn't talk about the details, but we'll talk about them in the coming slides. We start with the homologous pair of chromosomes, and then in interphase, the pair is replicated. Again, the chromosomes would not really be condensed in interphase, but I drew them as condensed so it's easier to see how for taking a diploid parent cell and creating haploids. Then the homologues, which are homologous chromosomes, are separated in meiosis 1. And then in meiosis 2, the sister chromatids are separated. Again, this is a simplified version of what really happens. Now, for more detail, let's start with interphase, which is where the chromosomes will replicate during the S stage. The chromosomes are uncondensed, so they're in chromatin form, and the centrosomes replicate. I put them there at the top. We talked about centrosomes more in my last video, but centrosomes are important for organizing um, spindle fibers in cell division, which help move chromosomes from one side of the cell to the other. Next, we have prophase 1, which is the longest phase of meiosis. A lot happens here. Chromosomes will condense. Homologous chromosomes pair together, aligned by their genes, to form tetrads. Tetra means four, so as you can see in that top picture, it, it makes sense why it would be called a tetrad when they go together. Synapsis is where a protein structure will form between the homologous chromosomes to hold them together tightly. And you can see that is the circled picture there at the top. Then crossing over occurs. Portions of non-sister chromatids break off at corresponding regions and rejoin the other chromos chromosome's DNA. Because remember, the two chromosomes have genes controlling the same traits at the same location on the corresponding chromosomes. Then the spindle will form. Kinetic cores of the homologue attach to microtubules from a pole. Again, we talked more about microtubules in the previous video, but they're important for pulling chromosomes around the cell. And there at the bottom is um, a picture of prophase Centrosomes, again, are important for organizing spindle fibers. Centrioles are part of the centrosomes. Spindle is forming. Those little 
uh, portions or fragments of the nuclear envelope, because remember the nucleus dissolved in interphase. We have homologous chromosomes, and the chiasmata is are the places where the two um, homologous chromosomes touch each other. And that is where crossing or over will um, occur. Next, we have metaphase one, where the tetrads are aligned along the metaphase plate, and they are being pulled by microtubules. Because remember, chromosomes can't just move from one side to the other because they want to. They're being pulled by microtubules. And again, the microtubules are attached to the kinetochores of the chromosomes, which are on the centromere. And the metaphase plate is not an actual uh, visible thing. It's an imaginary plane where um, toward the center of the cell. Anaphase 1 is where the pairs of homologous chromosomes are split apart. Sister chromatids will remain attached to one another, but microtubules will pull them apart, pull the homologous chromosomes apart to opposite ends of the cell. Then we have telophase 1 and cytokinesis. Two haploid cells are formed with replicated chromosomes. Each chromosome still has two sister chromatids. Cytokinesis will occur at the same time as telophase 1. An animal cell, a cleavage furrow, forms. This is the place where the cell will kind of pinch in. In plant cells, a cell plate will form because remember plants have cell walls. And this marks the end of meiosis 1. So from now on, we're going to have two cells that we're going to continue dividing. And remember, because we want to end up with four. So here are two cells in prophase 2, where chromosomes are already duplicated, right? They, that already happened in interphase before meiosis 1. So no interphase will occur between meiosis 1 and meiosis 2, because we want to have the number of chromosomes in each cell. Again, the spindle will form. Chromosomes will start being moved by the fibers toward the metaphase plate. Then we have metaphase 2, where chromosomes are lined up at the metaphase plate. Sister chromatids are not genetically the same, unlike mitosis, because remember in mitosis we are separating sister chromatids. However, here they're not the same. Next, we have anaphase 2, where sister chromatids are separated and pulled to opposite ends of the cell. And we have telophase 2 and cytokinesis. The nuclei will reform, the chromosomes will decondense. I like to think of telophase as basically the opposite of prophase. And we will result in four haploid genetically different cells. Remember, they're also genetically different from the parent cell because during crossing over, genetic information was um, exchanged between them. So let's talk about more origins of genetic variation. There is independent assortment of chromosomes, which means that homologous pairs have a random orientation. There's two possibilities per chromosome pair. The total number of possibilities is 2 to the nth power, where n is the haploid number. In humans, it's 2 to the 23rd, because remember, 23 is the haploid number, which is over 8 million. So that's a ton of possibilities. Here you can see what that looks like for um, 6 chromosomes, a haploid number of 3. We have 2 to the 3rd, 8 combinations. Um, I hope you can see what I mean by independent assortment. It's basically the order of them. You can switch them around. There's two options for each pair. There's also crossing over, which we talked about earlier. It produces recombinant chromosomes, which means that the chromosomes have DNA genes from both parents. In humans, an average of one to three crossing over events occur per chromosome pair. So again, a lot more genetic variation. 
and that's um, a picture that we saw earlier. So as you can already tell, if we combine an independent assortment with crossing over, we already have millions and millions and millions of possibilities. But there's even more. Random fertilization. Gametes have millions, about 8 million possibilities because of the independent assortment of chromosomes. Again, we talked about that in the last slide. So if we have 8 million possibilities per gamete, then there's two gametes in fertilization. So that would be roughly, if we do 8 times 8, 64 trillion combinations for the zygote. That's just crazy. This, with crossing over, creates an extremely large number of possibilities. So I hope you can see how genetic variation occurs, why every single individual is completely, not completely, but unique um, from everyone else. This genetic diversity has evolutionary significance because it leads to variation between the individuals of the same population. Those whose traits make them best suited to the environment will reproduce, passing those favorable traits on to the next generation. And I included this karyotype because again, I wanted to show like this exact um, combination of genes in this specific karyotype is unique. Again, we talked about how many combinations there are. There's not going to be any other person who has this exact combination of um, genes unless you have an identical twin. Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe if you would like to see more videos.